Hey guys, I'm gonna try a new feature. We're gonna call this the Virtual Gun Show. Now you don't have to get out of bed even. Uh, get your favorite drink, have a seat. I would, uh, you might wanna get a paper and pencil and write down some uh, things that I come across because you're gonna pretend walk through a gun show with me. Now here's a uh, kind of a view of what we're gonna be looking at. I've got a lot of uh, pistols and we have rifles. I'm not gonna be buying any rifles today, not even looking at them because they won't fit in the back of my car and I don't have any room in the safe. Uh, so uh, that's in the pretend world. Uh, in the real world, these were all consigned to us. We didn't necessarily, we agreed on prices. We didn't necessarily set the price. But the goal of this is just walking through a gun show. What kind of things do you come up with? And let's take a look at it. Talk, I'll just say whatever comes to my mind. And I'll show you the value, or at least the retail value that we have on it, so you get a better idea of where prices are. Now, if you've been going to shows or been uh, watched auctions or anything, you know the prices are going up. Uh, so don't get sticker shocked, but come along with me as we walk the aisles of this gun show. Okay, check this out. Uh, I just came across this table where I see some box guns. Now, whenever I see box guns, I have to stop. So I have to pause here, pick up the first box gun. Um, I know that's an original uh, case for a Walther, and I was going to guess Model 4. It's The box is coming apart a little bit. It does have the bow tie label, but the serial number will be gone. Uh, there's a bow tie label, uh, Walther Model 4. Uh, you can see that it has the original brush. And there's a manual, there's, uh, pull that out, there's the original manu manual. I hope the guy behind it, excuse me, sir, do you mind if I take a look? Okay, thank you. You always have to ask permission. Um, and there you go, there's the original manual. Now, interestingly, that's a Model 6 right there, I think. Uh, no, th there you go. That just is the cover. There, there's the Model 4. Uh, let's take a look at the gun itself. Uh, this thing is like 99%, absolutely stunning. Look at the front strap. Magazine looks correct. Yep. Uh, back strap. Beautiful blue. I'll just, uh, wherever possible, just wipe off any, any smoochies, schmutzies. Um, so that's uh, the first Model 4, like new, in the original box. It's not numbered to the gun, but um, we'll come back later and see if we can uh, work on this. But here's the price. Uh, for the box gun. Next, something special about this one. This is an early Mauser uh, 1910, model 1910. And sure enough, uh, again, this is in the box. Now, let me just go over the box. I notice I can see writing here. And if you uh, buy this, maybe a magnifying, I see some numbers. I can't really read what it says. Uh, there is a date here. I see 7.6, and then I can't read the rest, 19 something. Uh, but again, I know this is a model 1910. There is, looks like a 1199. And um, if you look at the serial number there, you see 1199. Um, but that is the box, still, in, still intact, meaning that it's still attached. The other one was not attached. Uh, this is, oh, this is a side latch. Now, this is the first model, which is very, very rare. Very few of them made. You can tell by the serial number, it's uh, very early. Uh, so again, first variation or first model of the side latch, uh, model 1910. You see the crown and proofs, so gotta keep moving, but this is a straw finished or maybe even case hardened. You can see a little bit of coloration there. You can see how nice this is. That's fire blue, and there's the magazine. We'll make sure, yep, that, that's uh, been blue. Not sure about the magazine, if it was worn off or it was supposed to be, I think that was supposed to be nickeled and rubbed. So I'm not sure about this magazine, but again, it's very early. The grips are uh, pristine, and it is all matching, and that's a price uh, because it's so rare. Along the same vein, uh, different color box, uh, by the way, it says 25 caliber right there, and that's what it would be. Uh, this this is attached still. It does have the manual. You can see an original manual. Uh, this is also a side latch, but it's a later variation. Also beautiful. See the fire blue here? Actually, fire blue here. Yeah, fire blue here, and not so much. Yeah, a little. It is fire blue, but you see clearly fire blue on 
this one here and then the extractor, um, I see some fire blue uh, there as well. You can see the condition of the gun. Uh, maybe the other one was a little bit nicer, but it is a side latch in the original box. And that's, that's what the magazine should look like. Uh, and that makes sense. Um, and the price on this one, not as rare and therefore a little bit cheaper. Okay, now this one uh, jumps out at me because I've never seen this box before. It does have a serial number here. And this was actually at a gun show and everybody at the gun show was coming over to find, check this out. I have never seen this before. Um, I'm just amazed. I, I just have never seen one before. I've never seen one pictured in a book, but it's a Model 37. And yes, you guessed it. This is a boxed femoral. Have you ever seen a boxed femoral? Um, I have not, and so I can't say, oh yeah, I know all about these. Um, it does have a steep price to go, because they are, I, I, I've never seen another one, and everyone I've talked to has said they've never seen one. So there is the price. Uh, it is like new in the box. Here's the gun itself, and just absolutely beautiful. You see the serial number there, and it is uh, during the Third Reich era. You see the Waffen proof. You see the... Uh, firing, test firing proof, front straps, absolutely nowhere, uh, like new in the box. There's the other side. Barely even a rack mark where it's been, the slide's been pulled out back. Now, it does come with these two magazines, and the two magazines you probably won't be able to see very well, but they are marked Model 37, and they're numbered right here, and it's two matching magazines. So, it's a Femru, two matching magazines, in what appears to be an original box, but I've never seen this documented before. Um, they were ordered by the Luftwaffe. Maybe they were shipped in crates, but in this case, it comes in original box numbered to the gun. There's the serial number on the back of the box. Look, it does look like it's Germanic writing. I like this enough to keep it for myself, but I will make it available uh, we are um, going to be putting all of these on the website, um, so if you're interested, you better move quickly. Okay, we're going to move on to the next table, but I see. I always say, hey, thank you, sir. It was great to see your stuff. You got a lot of ni nice items. Um, I'll give it a thought. And that's what you uh, say, by the way, when you really have no intention of coming back. So we're going to move on. Uh, here's the next table, and this guy's got some stuff that I like, uh, some small caliber weapons. I particularly see some Berettas, and I know from the, um, from the holster that that's going to be a CZ. So let's start with this one. Uh, this is, uh, first of all, I wanted to show you that the, the stitching on this split out. Now, that can be repaired. There is, there is a guy that I, actually, this part was already repaired. This part needs to be repaired. Uh, it does have the spare magazine, and then this is just a uh, Mauser, not just, uh, meaning after seeing the ones in the box, beautiful fire blue here, beautiful fire blue here, just a beautiful fire blue here. So that this is 32 caliber, and this is a model 1914. Uh, you can tell by the way the, the grip handle looks. The 1934 bows out a little bit more. So this is a 1914 and also squared off. Uh, magazine and the spare magazine is the same squared off magazine bottom. These are the magazines would not be numbered because this is a commercial gun. Uh, there you see the serial number. The condition is like 99 percent, 98, 99 percent. Um, beautiful gun. And here's the magazine has the nickeled tube. There's the price, and it is a full rig with a damaged holster. Here's the next one, which is a Model Two. Yeah, Waller Model 2, there you see the price. And these are fairly rare. This is a little baby uh, from very early in 1900. And there's the magazine, correct magazine. Condition, you see the straps are beautiful. Back strap is beautiful. Now here's a Model 4, we already saw a box Model 4. Uh, this one obviously not in a box, this is 32 caliber as well. Uh, the magazine is Waller marked. Uh, look at the straps, just absolutely gorgeous, shiny and bright, little bit of uh, uh, wear there. And i um, not sure what variation it is, but there is the serial number, and this is just the gun itself, and there is the price. Very nice looking uh, gun. Uh-oh, <laughs> this is a Mauser, but 
Uh, see that step down? This is a very rare model. Uh, only a few people out there actually know what this is. I just know they're very rare. Uh, this is actually known as a model 1914 hump because it has the hump. It, also, it was made on a Wednesday, which is hump day. So there you go. There's the hump. There's the serial number, just a three-digit serial number. Extremely rare. And I have seen these go for a lot of money. There's the uh, front strap. The wood is pretty good. It's worn here. Magazine, we'll take a look. And magazine is correct. So uh, due to the hump and the, um, it's actually got a different logo. Uh, we'll check it out and there you go. If you ever run across one, you know what the approximate value is. Now this uh, gentleman, and uh, he's got a lovely wife with him. Thank you, I'm glad your wife could come along. She must get bored, but um, th uh, they have a lot of, uh, not a lot, they have several Berettas for us to look at. This is Italian Army, you see the RE does have the correct magazine. You want to make sure that it's nine, it's a earlier one, so it's a, a model 1934, which is nine millimeter short, um, nine millimeter short, or I think that's the same as 380. Uh, the model 1935 was preferred by the Germans as that was 7.65 and not nine millimeter. And the Germans, in order to standardize their ammo for uh, things like the Sauer 38H, the PP, the PPK, they preferred the uh, 7.65. Uh, but here is the serial number. It also has a uh, additional proof here, which is I think is the technical unit. It's in a in an oval, so it's uh, double marked. But again, uh, issued to the Italian Army, and there is 1942. And in case you missed it, there is the price. These have been going up, but they've been, I, I actually see them all the time on auction now going easily over $1,000, like twelve and $1,300. Um, it, I just bid until I start to gag and then I stop. So uh, the prices, yes, the price has have been going up. Here's another one. And this is also nine millimeters, beautiful high polish finish. Uh, it does have an Italian proof mark. Uh, the other side of the tang, there is none. It is a G prefix. And uh, matching barrel, you can see the uh, front strap. These are just absolutely gorgeous, high polished blue. Barrels are beautiful. It is in nine millimeter. It does have the proper magazine, uh, beautiful condition. And I believe that's the same price. And, and then this uh, is the last Beretta. This comes in an, an original holster. The green holster was correct for the Beretta. And you can see the green interior. They usually have an oval stamp here. Not, not always, but often they'll have that oval stamp. And it'll be marked uh, for UT if it went to the Germans. Uh, this one, 1944. So this probably did go to the Germans. 1944, because that was during the time of transition when uh, Germany took over uh, the government in Italy. Mussolini uh, died. And you do see this one is 7.65. And um, it's still high polish finish. So in 1944, to have this beautiful high polish finish is quite rare. Uh, you see the proof mark here, and then there is, uh, there it is. There's the German proof for UT. Uh, that makes this one uh, uh, a bit more valuable. And let's see, sure enough, uh, this one is a little bit more. Um, and that's also because it comes with this holster which uh, probably sells for about 150. Okay, the final one at this table uh, is the CZ. Remember I said the holster looks like a CZ, and sure enough, it is a CZ. Now, sometimes they will be marked CZ across the top, and it'll just say uh, CZ-27, which is the uh, designation for this is a Model 27. You can see right here, Model 27. Now this one, uh, again, high polish finish with some straw, small parts, you see, uh, that's the correct magazine. We'll pop that out, a little tight, but there's the magazine. It is the correct magazine, wartime magazine. Notice the, uh, uh, even the straw parts on the screw, both sides. Uh, what makes this one uh, particularly rare, unusual, it does have a police marking. There's a check marking here and a check marking here, and it's dated 43. 
Now, the uh, textbooks say that 43 is a hard year to find. It's one of the hardest ones. So if a collector is collecting one from every year, 43 is very desirable. And we forgot to mention the Eagle K, which was the police Eagle proof. That's the Eagle K. And there is the price for the CZ police, 1943. Uh, now, this, this guy, uh, on, on his table, he's got some P38s. I love P38s. We're going to go through them really quickly. But I noticed this one uh, actually got off of the table. This should have been on the other table, not this table. But this is worth talking about because check it out. Small caliber, probably 25 caliber. Um, we start with the price this time, 1150 uh, And that is because, uh, first of all, this is a paper holster, also known as an ersatz holster, you can see the layers of paper. So it's glued together layers of paper because they were running short. They had supply chain issues just like we do, except we can't get baby formula. They couldn't get a lot of leather. Uh, maybe they were baby cows, and that's also known as veal. Anyway, I digress. Um, here is the gun, and they're very desirable. We have a number of people that say, if you ever get another WTP, I want it. There's the serial number. Uh, this one is in pretty good condition. I don't know WTPs very well, but they're obviously made by Mauser. Uh, they come in the little 25 caliber. You can see that it is marked a WTP and uh, 6.35, which is 25 caliber. It is has the one piece grip. And again, I've got like four people who want it. Uh, maybe, oh, look at that. That's Mark Mauser. If they're at a gun show, they like to haggle, but this gun show, there is no haggling. And, and by the way, I love not haggling because I like to know the price is the price. When I buy a car, I just buy the car. There's one price and everybody gets treated the same. Whenever I haggle, I walk away thinking, maybe I could have gotten it for less. So on, in this gun show, there is no haggling. The price is the price. If you're interested, you can contact us or buy it off our website. If you're not interested, you go to the next table. All right, let's jump into these uh, P38s and we're gonna jump in with both feet. One thing I noticed right away is these two because they're gonna be dual tones. Did you notice the finish? We got two phosphate finish. You can see the frames are phosphate and the barrels are blued. So this is all phosphate. Let's take this uh, SVW. Now, this is pretty crude looking, and at first it might turn you off a little bit, but the reason I stopped at this table and I'm checking this out is because of the serial number. I see that it is 330F, and F was the last ones made. So this is April of 1945. SVW is the Mauser factory. So you see Mauser factory, 1945. The F block was, th this is the last of them, absolutely at the end. This is all matching. And then after this, the French took over. They put a little French star right here. And they also made them in the F block. So the Germans left, the French came in. Well, the German leadership left. I think the workers probably stayed the same, except now they were hopefully treated better and fed better. But the workers did stay around for a while until they were able to get back to wherever they came from. Uh, so the F block is the last block and that makes this interesting. It does have the late war Mauser grips. Let's check out the magazine, see how late that is. Yeah, that doesn't even have a finish to it. And look, you know what? It's an earlier magazine because it doesn't have the V, so P38 no V. And you see uh, JVD, so this came through the uh, Spree Work factory. Uh, that's just the magazine. And um, again, you see some corrosion here. You would, this would be all matching, including the locking block. And you see the Waffen stamp, which by this time would be 135. Also on the back, very faint, it's marked 135. So this is just a very unusual gun just because it's so late and there's no tag. I can't give you the price, but off the top of my head, I'm thinking like 32. This one is also exceptional. Again, dual tone. This one's much better condition. You see the blued barrel, uh, but in this case, it's a Police Eagle F. Very, uh, very rare uh, because it has the AC43, which is the FN factory. So the, the slide was made in, in Belgium at the FN factory. It was then shipped to Mauser where the gun was put together and it went to the police. You'll take my word for it. Uh, very, very rare combination. 
to see the FN slide and uh, issued to the police. There were probably only about a thousand of these made. Let's check out the magazine. Magazine looks like a spree work magazine and it's not marked. So it's pretty late. Well, it went to the police so it would not need to be Waffen proofed. Uh, that's a pretty rare gun. And this is 45 FN slide. Here's one uh, with a holster and the holster, uh, the holster is very rare, 1945. You don't see uh, 45 holsters very often because of course they didn't make them very much. The war was, well, they were, they were done by, nine, uh, by April of 45 and also they were running out of leather. But this is a P38 with a very rare holster. I think the holster alone, I'm just guessing, but I'm thinking like 350 to 400, maybe more. Ah, this is why. Um, this is AC45 but it's going to be a zero prefix. This is a very rare variation. Should have three proofs, only has two. It's because it was made so late they never did the final inspection. Uh, it is all matching. Uh, it was made by Walder. It does have the correct grips. It does have a late magazine. See the U? That means 1945 unhardened and that it makes it a correct late, uh, late gun, late magazine, late grips. And there is the price. Here's the next one, much earlier. This is an AC40, kind of hard to find. It's in the B block. It's AC marked on the, um, the trigger guard. Uh, these would have had come with numbered magazines, but in this case, the magazine is not numbered. It is an early magazine, and it is uh, double proofed down here and up here, and that would be an Eagle. 359, so it's an early magazine, probably an armorer's replacement, uh, but again, an AC40. Uh, check out, the straps are beautiful. Um, the proof marks are as they should. Some of them, uh, one is under the finish, these are over the finish, and this is all matching, so a pretty rare gun. And there is the price on that one. Yeah, I thought I had another. This gentleman here at this table has another AC40, so he has two of them. Also in the B block, AC marked. There's the front strap. Now this one does have a matching magazine. You can see here the way that was stamped. It was stamped later. It actually indents. It is not straight. It is not factory. Uh, added later. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it's fake, but you know, this could have been done later. Um, maybe it is faked by a collector, but that is not factory. Also, they could have added the stamp if it went to East Germany or West Germany, ended up in the United States. It has no import marks, but if you're like me and you're at a gun show, you're going to hold up both of these. Which one is better if I can only buy one? Uh, there is AC40. This finishes a little bit better, both in the B block. There's the front straps on both. They're about the same. Uh, this side of the gun, this side of the gun, again, this one is a little bit better. And they're both in 9mm, of course. There's the top. And when we uh, compare the two, this one is a little bit better, but when I check the price, they both, I believe, are the same price. Yep. So many times uh, when I'm at a gun show, somebody says, excuse me, this one looks better. Why is it the same price? And I always say, just shut up and take the best one. Uh, but that's just me. Um, I don't know why they're both the same price, but as I said, they're consigned and uh, the uh, prices were set by the consigner. Um, if it were me, I would take this one. Okay, another P38. This is another late war AC45. This, guy, uh, this collector, this uh, gentleman at this table, uh, did like late war guns and it is in the A block. We're gonna check the barrel. It is a, um, it is a Walder barrel. It is all matching, uh, but again, 1945. This is about uh, February or March, and you see the proofs are all correct. Uh, nice looking gun, and there's the price for an AC45. I don't believe this has been dipped, um, but it does, it, you do see that there is no red and white. Uh, it's possible. There is definitely no import mark and no Russian X. Might be they just skipped a step because it's right at the end of the war. I have another one, AC45 in the B block. Looks exactly the same. Again, no red and white, but again, they were skipping that step. Uh, I don't think it's been dipped. There is no Russian X. Um, and on this one, the barrel will be from the FNH factory. And you see right here, it is Waffen 
76, which is the same as the CZ27 uh, Waffen 76, and it also will be marked inside FNH. So it was made in uh, a Czech factory. And we didn't do the magazine, but this is a spree work magazine. And the final P38 is a very nice BYF 44. It's in the Z block. Look at the finish on that. Just beautiful, hardly used. This one, you do see the, the white and the red is painted. Here's the other side of the gun. It's uh, Waffen 135, as it should be. There's the front strap. And here is the mag. Beautiful grips, by the way. Magazine, I can't see the proof, but it does have a Waffen proof here. And that's it at this table. I see a guy over there with some uh, Japanese pistols. Let's ch check him out. Okay, I mentioned I, I saw this one table, has some Japanese items, but first let's start back here. There's some odds and ends. This one pops out at me. Uh, this was on somebody's table. If you watch my videos, you know this is a vinyl party leader. Very, very rare. You don't want to lift this or move it because they do crack. This has a little bit of a crack. And I sold uh, one of these. Uh, actually, the one I did the video on, I think it was like $3,500. Um, very, very rare. Uh, this one on this table, um, I like this gentleman because that's, that's a really good price for a rare vinyl party leader. And it is authentic. Uh, so we might have to come back on that one. Uh, this one, I've, I've not seen the rising target pistol before, but this is a rising arms, you know, rising made U.S. weapons. Uh, um, well, they made a machine gun and they also made a rifle uh, during the war. And here is company logo. It's kind of cool. These are wooden. Uh, kind of cool. I, I, like I said, I've never seen one of these before. It does come in 22 caliber. It's a uh, nice little 22 caliber long rifle. Uh, target pistol. Don't know a lot about them. I do know the magazine was a little bit hard to get out, but there you go. There's the magazine. Typical two-tone magazine. Actually, it looks a lot like a Colt magazine. Also, two U.S. weapons. They're over here with a Polish one in between. Uh, this is just a stunning holster, 1945, and you can see Milwaukee's saddle, saddlery, uh, U.S. marked. It has the nice lanyard there. Uh, now, this pistol... I don't know that the pistol's from 1945, and I'm at a gun show, so I don't have my records with me, but this is GHD, uh, correct magazine, by the way, correct magazine for World War II, and there's the serial number if you want to look up the date. I'm going to guess around 1944, uh, but you can see the finish. It does have a correct Colt barrel, and the straps are beautiful. Just a, actually, it might be later because uh, they did that in later in 45. So this might be a 45. You can check it out. Worthwhile checking out. Uh, and that's hard to read, but that is 4250. And we'll put it back in the holster from whence it came. And then here's another U.S. Uh, here's a U.S. weapon. There is the holster, beautiful holster, dated 1917. So World War I era. There's the maker. And this is for a 1917, and it could be a Smith & Wesson or a Colt. In this case, it is a Colt. You do see, I think that's the Springfield proof. There's the Colt Stallion logo. Uh, it's in 45 caliber. It is a revolver. And here is the U.S. Army model 1917, and there is the serial number. Uh, it's all matching from what I can tell. A little bit of corrosion here and some wear there. And there is the price for a fairly nice 1917 revolver for, from World War I. Now, one more outlier on this table, and that is a Polish Radom. Uh, you see a Waffen proof here. It does say uh, P35 with the Waffen proof. Uh, there would be no markings on the back, but it's, it's a very nice holster. It does come with a spare magazine. Let's pull this Radom out so we get an idea of the year. But before we do that, it, it is Waffen proofed on the, well, I'll call it the toe of the magazine. It's Waffen proofed there. Probably Eagle 189 from Steyr. And this one is also marked right here. 
very light Waffen stamp, but it's there. Um, plastic, uh, black plastic grips. Um, now the suffix is W, uh, and that's a three lever W. So just before they switched over to, I think it was two levers, but um, they the three lever, not slotted, W. But the finish on this is beautiful. Uh, nice straps, a little bit of wear from, from holding it. Uh, but uh, it is all matching, including the barrel, and there is the price. And that's for a full rig with the extra uh, magazine and holster. Now, let's get to these Japanese items, and then we will be done, because it's time for me to get home so my wife won't get mad. She doesn't mind me going to gun shows, but she doesn't like it when I'm late for dinner. So let's get moving. Uh, here we see a Type 94. Finish is very nice. This is dulled down. Uh, let's take a look at the date. Uh, this was made in 1943. You see the serial number ends in 688. I always check the magazine and it ends in 688. So this is, it comes with one matching magazine um, and these are eight millimeter by the way and you can see the price. I have another one here. Uh, this one is a little bit nicer. You notice the straps are a little shinier. It also has um, straw parts. Yeah, this one has straw parts that have dulled down a bit. This, this, uh, these straw parts kind of pop a little bit more. You can see that. Uh, and this ends in 337. Uh, this is also 1943. Actually, it has the exact same markings. Same factory markings. And, uh, and hopefully, it has a matching magazine. It would be 337, and it is indeed a matching magazine. Uh, so these are both really good examples, and I believe those are both the same price. Uh, next, we have a Type 14. We have three Type 14s. Now, this is earlier. Uh, you do see straw, uh, straw small parts, straw color, I should say. You see the smaller trigger guard. Uh, later, they uh, went to a, a, a bigger trigger guard. This is from... Uh, this is dated five, which would be 1930, actually October of 1930. Let's see if it has a matching magazine. This is unusually early and just unusually beautiful. Even the, the uh, grips are not worn at all, so um, that's very nice. And it does not have a matching magazine. So everything else is correct. It has the nickel tube, which later they did away with that. So much like the Lugers, they had nickel mags and then they just went with uh, blued steel mags. And you see the price here uh, for this one, which is just really early and better than most. This is a lot better than most. Look at the strap on there and the strap here. They really pop. Now this one, this is an early leather holster. It also has a nickel fittings which is, uh, again, an early feature. Uh, they didn't worry about that later. You can see the fittings here uh, are just, they're, they're a lot cheaper, black versus the nickel. Uh, this is leather versus canvas. Talking fast, but I'm getting tired of the show here. Um, but at least you didn't have to travel at all. Uh, it does come with an uh, extra firing pin, which these firing pins did break. Not a lot, but it's not unusual to see a broken firing pin with the uh, Japanese um, manufacturing. You do see a cleaning rod down in here, which is a nickel cleaning rod. So this is early. Uh, this is another beautiful gun. See the, uh, there's almost no wear on these. These are beautiful Nambus. Uh, let's see the date. That says 17, which would be 43. And uh, there you go. You can see the blued tube versus the nickel. So this is a little later. And there is the large trigger guard. Remember we talked about early trigger guard and later trigger guard, small and large. Uh, straw parts. Remember we talked about uh, straw colored small parts versus blued. And then I mentioned the early tube versus the later two. So let's not get these mixed up. So let's go back to the one we're on now. And we see 649, 649. So it does come with the matching magazine. This is really, really nice. So let's check out the price. Comes with that leather holster. Uh, very, very nice assembly with 
the matching magazine, and there is the price. Now, let's look at the final one, um, which I did, a uh, couple people at the show came over to me and said, over to me and say, hey, check this out, because this is a two-match mag rig, really hard to find with two-match mags. You do see the straps, two sets of straps, I think, one goes around your, yep, this one goes around your waist and one goes over your shoulder. Uh, here is the back of it. This is canvas and uh, so glue and canvas, kind of like the German paper. Uh, remember the paper holster, they're, they're pressing this canvas together um, and it really comes apart on this, on this strap. You can see how that comes, it just, you can see the layers just falling apart. Hold on a minute. I don't read Japanese, but see inside there. It's worth researching if somebody picks this up. It, there is Japanese writing in here. You could have that translated. Um, that's kind of cool. I hadn't seen that before. We open it up. You see Japanese writing in here. And we take the gun out. I'll get to the gun last. But inside, you see the uh, cleaning rod. That is blued, by the way, for a later war. I'm gonna pour, pull out the spare magazine. Oopsies, you always ask, uh, sir, do you mind if I pull this out? And then I drop it on the ground and he says, don't come back. But fortunately, I'm not gonna get yelled at. Uh, there is not a spare firing pin. And I always check inside here, because often, some, well, not often, sometimes you'll find uh, ammo or you'll find a capture paper or even just the vet's name. Uh, that certainly helps. These are very stiff, by the way. Uh, meaning I can't even lift this. I'm not sure about that. I've not seen the red and the white before, but it looks very cool. Larger trigger guard. Let's see what year it would be. Uh, 19. So that is 44. Uh, look at the front strap. Uh, finish is beautiful. Back strap. And now we do the magazines, both magazines. Check this out. 543. I'm going to set this down. And both magazines are 543, 543. And the price, in case you didn't see it, is right here. There's the price. Uh, so a two match mag, full rig, Japanese type 14. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the new format, the virtual gun show. If you liked it, please let us know. If you didn't like it, then we won't take you along next time.